afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Every year, Vermonters lose hundreds of thousands of dollars to scam artists and con men. And every year, the scams and cons get more sophisticated. Knowledge is the best way to avoid being defrauded. So today, we're turning to the Vermont Attorney General's Consumer Assistance Program. It's a program that educates consumers to recognize and avoid scams, and it provides information and assistance to those who are victimized. Joining me is Janet Murnane. Janet is an Assistant Attorney General and the director of the Consumer Assistance Program. With her are two UVM students who work in the program as part of its service learning class, Courtney Cunningham and Lucas Austin. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, let's start with a little bit of background on the Consumer Assistance Program and how the UVM students became involved in the program, Janet. Well, thanks for having us, Judy. Sure. So the Consumer Assistance Program is known as CAP, and it's been a joint program between the University of Vermont and the Vermont Attorney General's Office for over 35 years, so it's a real success story. And we do, we do a couple essential tasks. We staff a consumer helpline, and Lucas and Courtney help us do that. Mm -hmm. um, Courtney is a senior public communication major, and Lucas is also a senior public communication major. And Courtney is an intern with our office. She's actually helping us prepare some outreach materials. Mm -hmm. So we staff a consumer helpline, and the students uh, do that work, and we answer consumer inquiries. And then we also take consumer complaints against businesses and we run a free letter mediation service that assists in resolving those complaints. And this, this program is the way that the Attorney General's Office keeps track of what's happening to consumers in Vermont. And so if people have any, any questions, they should call. We, stat, we take questions on a broad variety of areas. Sometimes they're not something we can help with. But we make sure consumers get to the right place. So phone calls, scam mailings, emails, it seems like there are all kinds of ways to contact, be contacted by some scammers. What are the numbers in Vermont when it comes to these kinds of scams? So we gave you a top 10 scam report for the year. Mm -hmm. We got over 5,900 uh, scam reports in 2015 from Vermont consumers. Wow. And we know the number is much higher because many people get repeat contacts and many people after they've contacted us the first time, you know, don't, don't do it again but um, the numbers are high and they're continuing to grow. Uh, the largest complaint area that we see is the scam phone call. Well, we're gonna come back to that uh, chart of the top 10 scams from uh, the past year, but before we talk about the specifics, why can't these fraudulent calls be stopped? Is there something that Congress can do or, or lawmakers can do? We wish. <laughs> <laughs> this, the bad news is we can't stop these calls. Neither the state or the federal government can do that. The calls are coming from overseas primarily. India is a big uh, country of origin right now. And um, they're using what's called voice over internet protocol, which means they can use a computer to generate thousands and thousands of calls a day to Vermonters and people in every other state in our country. And um, they can auto dial numbers, they can disguise their phone numbers. And the, and the calls, um, I mean, the, the bad part of this new technology is that they can reach so many of us. And can they identify who, th where these calls are coming from? Most, again, most of them are coming from overseas. Um, and again, India is a real is a real source for these calls right now. Mm -hmm. And the state can't do anything about it. There's no way to stop the calls, but there are two solutions. One is consumer education. What we're doing right now, um, encouraging consumers to call us and to report the calls, and then we use consumer advisories through the media and shows like this to try to make sure that consumers know about the current scams. Mm -hmm. The second thing is call blocking technology. And there is technology available today that allows us to block calls before they ring into our homes. It uses lists of known scam numbers and they upload on a, you know, on a weekly basis and it allows those calls to be identified before they ring. Mm -hmm. And so what are the top scams in Vermont over the past year? Well, the Sweepstakes scam is one that continues to plague us. So it's not new. This is not a new scam. You've won a million dollars. You've won a foreign lottery. Uh, you know, you've you've won free money. Those those are not a new scam, but they continue to be one that consumers are spending money paying on, and um, so it and it particularly affects seniors. So it's of concern to us. Well, who doesn't want to win money, <laughs> free <Yeah>. money? <laughs> we, we wish, right? And so I think we have um, an example of one of the scam calls. We're going to take a listen to. Hello. We have been trying to reach you. This call is officially a final notice from IRS. Internal Revenue Services. The reason of this call is to inform you that IRS is filing lawsuit against you. To get more information about this case file, please call immediately on our department number 202. 
I repeat 202-864-1176. Thank you. So I take it that wasn't the IRS. <laughs> that right there was not the IRS. <clears throat> so actually at the Consumer Assistance Program, in 2015 alone we received 3,000 calls from Vermonters um, reporting that they've been threatened um, and by the IRS and about a lawsuit or possibly even being arrested, which is... That's pretty scary. It can be scary. Um, and as we heard on the recording, uh, what we heard was a robocall, um, but there also are live callers. And those can be pretty scary. Um, they're very real, they're very professional, and what they do is they give you a deadline to pay, um, and if you don't pay, you, know, you can face arrest. Um, and so there are some Vermont consumers that are obviously frightened, um, and they do pay. And so what we really want to tell Vermonters is that the IRS will never call somebody <laughs> to threaten a lawsuit or, or arrest. And another thing to really note is that the IRS will never ask a consumer to pay um, via money transfer, or excuse me, a wire transfer or, or a prepaid card. So those are all red flags. Is you get a phone call first from the IRS, but then when they start saying that you owe money or they're going to arrest you, those are all red flags. Big red flag. So the IRS scam is the top scam in Vermont during the past year, and a host of other phone scams are also on the list. Rounding out the top five are debt uh, collection, computer tech support, phishing, and lottery sweepstakes. The Consumer Assistance Program also tracks how much money is lost in these types of scams. Janet, how much money did Vermonters lose last year? Um, we, Vermonters reported losses uh, in the hundreds of thousand of dollars to us, and it happens through every means, wire transfers, through companies like uh, Western Union, bank transfers, credit card losses, checks, um, many different means. Mm -hmm. And I guess, Courtney, you've, you've come up with a graph that kind of illustrates that? I have, yes. Um, so as you'll see from our graph, consumers lost over $425,000 last year um, through different bank or wire transfer scams. Um, and as Janet mentioned, even in sweepstakes scams, which aren't new types of scams, consumers still lost over $100,000 last year. And we really expect those numbers to be much higher. This is just what was reported into us. And so are certain people targeted for scams more than others? So these days, everyone's a target. If you've taken out a loan or if you've um, applied for a credit card or bank online, um, but really senior citizens are the biggest target for these scams. They're home and they have money. And um, so they're particularly targeted for sweepstakes scams or imposter scams. There's also a new trend now where businesses are being targeted. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, so in these types of scams, a uh, someone working for a company will receive an email that appears to be from the CEO or another high-ranking professional, and they ask them to complete a money or wire transfer um, and move some money into a different account. Um, so they make that transfer, and then by the time that they realize that the transfer wasn't actually, the email wasn't actually from their boss or a legitimate person from the company, it's too late and the money's already been picked up and the money's gone. Mm -hmm. um, so we recommend that businesses always have an internal verification protocol before making any type of transfers like that. Also, fake invoices too are a problem? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely, um, where they'll receive an order for goods or services and they don't actually have the, um, it's not a legitimate order. So. So, Janet, what's the best advice for spotting a scam, or what are some of the tip-offs to a suspicious email or phone call? So, for phone calls, we still encourage people very strongly to get on the Do Not Call list, the federal Do Not Call registry, because then you know that uh, it's not a legitimate telemarketer calling you if you're getting a sales call. You know it's a scam if you're on the Do Not Call list, and you can hang up and not engage with that caller. How do you get on that list? Uh, there's a federal um, registry and you can call in with the phone that you want to register and you can also write to them with your phone number. Mm -hmm. What about robocalls? So robocalls or automated calls are a big um, issue. 
uh, they are largely illegal. There's a few limited exceptions. You know, you might get a call from your airline about a cancellation or a school closing or your pharmacy. Those are legal calls. And also political calls in this season are, mm -hmm. are legal. But other than that, robocalls are illegal and you shouldn't be getting one. And if you, if you get one, you know you can hang up. Mm -hmm. And so, as we discussed, neither the IRS or any federal, state, or local official is going to call you and threaten to sue you or arrest you. The government does not <laughs> call and threaten to arrest you. The, the, last year, there was a, a scam here in Chittenden County called the jury duty scam, and it was they said they were the local sheriff calling and threatening arrest. We worked with the sheriff's department to get the word out and do some media advisories. You know, again, the police, the IRS, the FBI, they do not call you and threaten arrest. What about card member services? I, many of us have gotten this call. I know I certainly have. If you get a call, a recorded call from someone saying it's card member services, they're pretending to be your bank, that is a scam call. You should hang up and not engage. Don't call them back to tell them you don't want the call. Just hang up and just you know, ignore the call. If you get a phone call from anyone saying that they're from Microsoft or any other company, and then there's a problem with your computer, is that suspicious as well? This is another big scam affecting seniors and uh, it's a live caller who's saying that you have a problem with your computer. And many of us who may not be as uh, tech savvy uh, have fallen for this scam. In 2015, this was another big year for that. Um, they say that they're going to help you. What they do is ask for remote access to your computer. And then they take your credit card number and charge you for the service. And they've also uh, had access to all the files on your computer. So uh, another, if someone's calling you and offering to fix your computer, hang up the phone. Also, too, if they're offering or telling you that you won something, that's also a red flag. There is no free money. There is, <laughs> there is, no, there is no pot of gold. Um, anybody offering, telling you you've won uh, you know, a prize or free money is, is almost always a scam. And just, just tell them, okay, mail it to me and hang up. Hang up. <laughs> uh, is, is there ever some information that should never, ever be given out? Well, you never want to give out your social security number as an identifier. Sometimes scammers will call and say, oh, we need to identify that you're a part of our group. Never give your social security number, never give your credit card, unless you've placed the call and you know that who you're speaking to. Mm -hmm. um, what's the best way to avoid being scammed? So Lucas mentioned this uh, in respect to the IRS scam. Never send money to anyone who's asking you to, to use a wire transfer. The reason they're asking you to send money that way is because once it's picked up, the money is gone and no one can help you get it back. So sending money by wire transfer or any prepaid method is an immediate sign that it's a scam. Um, if you're contacted by someone who says they're a grandchild or... This is particularly chilling. Again, another one really targeted to seniors, and it targets our emotions. They contact seniors and say that they're the grandchild, they're in distress, don't call mom and dad and uh, I need help to get out of jail or I need help to pay my hospital bill and please send money right now and do it usually by wire transfer. So if you do get one of those calls, what should you do? If you get one of those calls, do never send money until you've checked with your family members to see where they are. The callers always t ask you not to do that because of the urgency of the situation, but again, know that this is a well-used well scam and that seniors are frequently targeted with this. So if you have been a victim of a scam, what can you do, what should you do? So if you have sent money um, uh, through a wire transfer company, immediately call the wire transfer company and try to stop the transfer. They will assist you if you have your information, and again, you can find out whether or not the money's been picked up. So if you've sent money that way, immediately call. If you've given out your bank account number, immediately call your bank and either close the account down or speak with your bank uh, person about the best way to handle the matter. But you want to shut that down and shut down any authorization that you've given. Uh, how, should, how can Vermonters contact the Consumer Assistance Program? We have a website. We encourage people to take a look at that. We have lots of information for consumers on scams, what to do if you have been the victim of a scam. And uh, we also have a toll-free number in Vermont. And it's on the screen. And we just have about a minute left. Lucas, what have you learned from working in this program? Well, there are many horrible people out there that will try and scam you. And, you know, if you ever have a question or anything, everyone in the Consumer Assistance Program is very friendly. Um, so you can feel free to call us. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important thing that I've learned uh, through this is to really just never give out your information over the phone. I think it's a big thing we tell callers mm -hmm. um, to avoid identity theft. Um, 
and to never ever uh, wire money. Mm -hmm. It's huge. And if you have questions, call your banking place or call the Consumer Assistance Line. Yes. All right. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us today. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.